let's move on to the lymphoid cell lines from here so when we talk about lymphoma there are two forms of lymphoma one is the primary lymphoma where there is no associated lymphoma anywhere in the body and we see it in the brain that is primarily the first area to be involved with the brain that would be called as a primary lymphoma as opposed to a secondary lymphoma because there is some other entity there's a diffuse lymphoma or uh, the patient is immunocompromised or there's some underlying lesion that would be associated with secondary lymphoma these are two separate imaging entities they they give different appearances primary lymphoma tends to be a more solid tumor with sheets of enhancement it, these are again as we talked in the case of germinoma where it is a round blue cell tumor lymphoma is also a round blue cell tumor so the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio would be very high these are densely packed cells so they kind of restrict water movement and it causes restriction of diffusion in that so densely packed neoplasm will be hyper dense on ct it will be iso to hyper intense on t1 and t2 sequences with surrounding vasogenic edema it's a Mass lesion, so it will be associated with mass effect. It almost always enhances and it tends to hub the ventricular lining. It is typically like always touching the ventricular lining either along the corpus callosum or along the superior or the uh, periventricular area. Now, this is one of those entities that crosses the midline. The other entities, the frequent entities that we talk about which cross uh, the midline would be glioblastoma multiforme or lymphoma or demyelinating disease although we always include metastasis and infection also as potential entities that can cross the midline but this the classic three when we talk about lesions crossing the midline the classic three are gbm lymphoma and demyelinating diseases so that would be the typical primary lymphoma so on the other side secondary lymphoma does not tend to have the ventricular lining it tends to be more peripheral it can be anywhere in the brain parenchyma but tends to be more peripheral subcortical region this is an entity there is to be differentiated from PML. This is unlike the primary lymphoma, it doesn't follow the same characteristics. It may or may not have a restricted diffusion. It may or may not intensely enhance. There will be some enhancement, but it will not enhance like how primary lymphoma enhances. Primary lymphoma almost all never bleeds, whereas secondary lymphoma may be associated with some hemorrhage or cancer or necrosis. So lymphoma, we talked about primary lymphoma, that it will always enhance intensely with sheets of enhancement. There are are certain in, uh, conditions when it may potentially not enhance and we should be aware of that one is when it is a secondary lymphoma or it has been treated so giving steroids or radiation it almost melts away the lymphoma which will probably come back later on but at that point it melts away the lymphoma and there is no associated enhancement so we should keep in mind when we have seen a case who has come from say another hospital and we see a large mass lesion with some restricted effusion but no enhancement the first question we should ask has the patient been treated treated with steroids or radiation because we have to think of lymphoma if there's a, a lesion with restricted effusion crossing the midline always that differential so these are a few examples there is a non contrast city of an examination where we see that hyperdensity hubbing the ventricular lining you see this lesion spreading along the ventricular lining think of lymphoma the second case is a post contrast image where there is a intensely enhancing mass lesion in the right periatrial region and then we are not get, getting the all the slices but this is in direct continuity crossing over the midline uh, with uh, along the posterior corpus callosum now we talked about that the three entities that we talk about when lesions cross the corpus callosum gbm that would be associated with hemorrhage necrosis central necrosis uh, the other one being demyelinating that would not be associated with this kind of mass effect and this kind of intense enhancement so this one would almost we can predict that this is going to turn out to be lymphoma lesion on MR along the posterior corpus callosum mass lesion with intense enhancement and restricted diffusion restricted diffusion is a hallmark of round blue seal tumors when we see inside the brain so you see enhancement you think of germinoma you think of lymphoma you think of primitive neuroectoderma tumors these are the intraparenchymal mass lesions that enhance as well as are associated with uh, restricted diffusion because of their tightly packed nature and high cytoplasmic uh, uh, high nucleus 
cytoplasmic ratio. So this is advanced lesion crossing corpus callosum, intense enhancement, sheets of enhancement, restricted diffusion. This is going to be uh, lymphoma. This is a case of secondary lymphoma. So this is where the issue arises. There is a mass lesion there is mass effect so it is going to be a mass lesion there's low attenuation on ct hyper intensity on t2 and faint patchy enhancement on contrast administration now this patient was an immunocompromised patient so we can predict that this is going to be a lymphoma uh, the other differential if we did not see the mass if we did not see that enhancement on the ct it is the mass is a hyper dense on mr it is uh, iso intense uh, or slightly lower intensity uh, along the medial parietal lobe and that is the same media that shows enhancement if we did not see enhancement this would be virtually indistinguishable on imaging uh, from immunocompromised related pml now we have a few factors that differentiate now pml tends to involve the subcortical u fibers lymphoma does not involve the subcortical u fibers pml almost never enhances in its primary state uh, secondary lymphoma almost has some enhancement associated but what we should keep in mind is secondary lymphoma may potentially not enhance the patient may have been treated with steroids then also it will not enhance and on the flip side the patient with pml potentially may enhance when he is being treated and his immunity is coming back in an entity called as immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome or iris so all these features further confound the imaging characteristics making it difficult I mean, life is not simple we have to things are not straightforward whenever there is a obvious finding so this is the classic appearance of pml there is always some entity that will confound it with a secondary lymphoma so we have to keep these two things in mind you see a uh, peripherally located uh, abnormal signal intensity extending almost up to the cortex think of these two conditions simultaneously lymphoma and pml both these things will be associated with immunocompromised status then accordingly what the how the patient is presenting what are the other features whether the pa patient was neutropenic and his immunity is coming back you can go in favor of pml with iris or if the patient did not never had any of the pml features then this is going to be uh, secondary lymphoma so those are the various factors that you clinical associate serological values csf values all this all this as a whole thing we, when we sit down in tumor board these are the things we talk about that how to then these are the things that we'll be using to differentiate between secondary lymphoma versus pml but those are the two differential that we have to think of